Alrighty, chapter 16, day three video. Um, what we're gonna focus on today are the different types of probabilities. Uh, the first types uh, you have done in the past. Uh, the third type comes from the activity that we did today in class. Um, probability in general, if you remember, is the number of times that something does occur divided by the number of possible outcomes that could happen. Um, and I know you've done this probability in earlier grades. So two, first two types, empirical, which is an estimate of the probability based on actual trials. So if I were to flip a coin, let's say 100 times, the probability I would get heads empirically would be how many heads I got out of the 100. Theoretical is the number of ways that it should happen divided by the total. Uh, so theoretically, one out of every two outcomes sh uh, should be heads. There's a two-sided coin, it's equally likely, one out of those two is heads. So empirical comes from data, from the actual trials. Theoretical uh, is what we, in theory, what should happen. Uh, we have a couple scenarios with probability. We have the probability of like event A and then event B happening. And when we have two independent events happening, one right after the other, we will multiply those probabilities together. Um, for example, I draw two cards, find the probability of getting a king on the first card and then a queen on the second card. And the other piece of information that needs to be told to us is with or without replacement. In this case, I'm gonna talk about what if I don't replace the card back in the deck, all right? So I draw two cards, what's the probability of getting a king and then a queen? All right, so let's take a look. Well, if I draw a card out of a deck, the probability of getting a king, there are four kings out of 52. The probability of getting a queen, there are four queens, but if I have not replaced a card, there are only 51 cards left in the deck. Now, a king first, and then a queen second. Because I have two independent probabilities happening, one and then the next, I need to multiply those two numbers together. And I end up with 0 .0060, out to four decimal places. All right, so probably of event A happening and then B happening, we gotta multiply those two independent probabilities together. Draw two cards from the deck. Find the probability of getting a six and a four without replacement. You might say, well, isn't that the same thing as the king and the queen? Notice, this problem said a king and then a queen, so we have a specific order that they happen in. This was, I want to get a six and a four. Well, I could get the four first and then the six, or I might get the six and then the four. So we have a probability of one thing and then another thing happening, two independent probabilities happening, or we got to address this now, or a six and a four. So let's do the four and a six without replacement. So there are four fours out of 52, and there are four sixes, but again, I'm out of 51 because I did not replace the card. Or, or means we're going to have to add whatever we get to the next set of probabilities, because this could happen or this could happen. We're gonna add those two probabilities together. A six on the first card is four out of 52, and then four out of 51 for the four. So we have those two independent probabilities happening, this one or this one, and we're gonna add them together. So this is four times four is 16, out of 2652. This again is 16 out of 2652. And we can keep them as fractions or you could convert them to decimals, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you convert to decimals, you have to be careful with the rounding directions of the problem. Uh, if it's multiple choice, a lot of times you'll see them as fractions. So if you can keep them as fractions, that would be great. 16 plus 16 is 32 out of 2652. So if I have the probability of 
something happening or something else happening, we need to add those probabilities together. All right, now to the activity we did today in class. The activity we did today in class was all about what we call binomial probability. And it's based on whether you can be successful or failure at anything. Uh, success or failure could be does it rain or does it snow. It could be do I make the basket or don't make the basket. Um, it could be whether I shoot the eraser or knock over the cup or not. Okay? So, remember what we worked with. We talked about the number of trials. We talked about the probability that your success on any one trial and we also talked about the number of successes now sometimes we use the letter R and sometimes they use the letter X okay um, but for right now I think with our calculations we're going to use R as a number of successes this is the formula that we generated in class combination so again out of all the trials how many successes are we looking for times the probability of success how many successes we're looking for failure is one minus the success and failure would be out of all the trials minus the successes that's how many failures we're looking for and we worked on that and we developed that formula in class today so let's put one example here in our notes so for each of these questions, though, you need to identify what the N, the P, and the R is for each problem first. That's part of getting full credit when you do the problems, part of organizing yourself. So here's an example. If it rains in Rochester 45% of the time, find the probability in any given week that it rains less than two days, okay? So it rains in Rochester 45% of the time. Find the probability in any given week. So we have to identify N, P, and R. Okay? So N, number of trials. Doesn't say how many days. Oh, any given week. That says seven days in a week. So N is seven. So sometimes it might tell you specifically how many trials. Sometimes you've got to figure it out from the problem. Probability of success, well, what do I want it to do? I, do I want it to rain or not rain? It rains. What's the chance that it rains? It rains 45% of the time. I convert that to a decimal. And less than two days. Less than two, that would be no days, or it could be one day. So now we write out, we have to do two separate problems. The probability that we could get it in one day or the probability we might have it on no day. So using our formula, 7C1, again, what do we want to happen? How many times? What do we not want to happen? How many times? So I want it to rain one and not rain six. Type this in, we get 0.0872. Or I want it to rain no times. So raining no times. You might say, well, why do I need to do that? If it's a zero there, you need to show your work, though, and how you got your answer. So you still need to show this, because anything to the zero power, even though it's one, we still need to show that, that work. Uh, so raining no times, not raining seven times. Take these two probabilities, have them together, and there's our answer. So um, in class, we were shooting erasers. We could talk about raining. We could talk about bows and arrows. We could talk about anything that has a success or failure attached to it. And out of a certain number of trials, we're looking for a certain number of successes. And that's it.